Hello, and thank you for tuning in to Southeast Media Sunrise, dedicated to giving a voice to authors of all genres. I'm your host, Jody Hawkinson. Joining us remotely by phone today is Ioana Serpanos, author of Giving Spirit a Voice, The Mechanics of Mediumship. Ioana Serpanos is a recognized and well-respected psychic medium and mentor who comes from a long lineage of psychic mediums. She has been conducting readings for over 20 years. She is renowned for her accuracy, honesty, and integrity, and delivers spirit messages with compassion, humility, and down-to-earth practicality. Ioana has just published her new book, Giving Spirit a Voice, which is a practical manual that guides the reader through the process of learning mediumship and is suitable for the novice and professional medium alike. Welcome, Ioana, and thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Jody, for having me. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Certainly. So, Jody, originally I actually came from an engineering background. So I was qualified and trained as an um, electronics engineer, and I worked in the automotive industry. But, however, in my, as you've mentioned in your intro there, in my lineage, I do come from a long line of mediums, although I'm the first uh, practicing professional medium in my family line. And I am absolutely passionate about giving spirit a voice, which is why I titled that the book uh, and gave my new book, Giving Spirit a Voice, that title. And I do, of course, uh, give readings uh, here in Australia where I'm based in Melbourne. But I also am deeply, deeply passionate about teaching and mentoring developing mediums. And my mentoring, I'm fortunate enough to be able to do from not only here in Australia, but I have clients uh, that I mentor further away as Norway, uh, the USA, also New Zealand, and of course around Australia itself as well. So I'm really excited and passionate about that. What is the difference between a medium and a psychic? Thank you, Jodie. That's a great question, and it's one that has a lot of people have a misconception about. So a psychic, very simply, is someone that is able to read or connect to a person that has a living physical body. So we often go to psychic readers to find out about our earthly pursuits, life, love, relationships, career, all those sorts of things that are to do with our earthly life. A medium is able to connect to a spirit person, a person who has passed on into heaven or the spirit world that doesn't have a physical body and is essentially a messenger for spirit. And mediumship in particular is all about the healing. It's reuniting two worlds and allowing that healing to come through, through the messages, things that were left unsaid, arguments that were, weren't finished, uh, being at, not being able to get to the deathbed in time are all things that people carry with them that are quite heavy and, uh, you know, don't allow them to move past the grief cycle. So to be able to visit a medium and have that confirmation and that verification of your loved one given and then that message of healing and hope and laughter and love to come through is incredibly healing for the person left behind. Interesting. So can anyone be a medium? So that's a, uh, a question that I answer in this way. So we all, all of us in humanity can sing, we can all run, we can all do these wonderful things. But sometimes we're born with what sometimes is referred to as gifts or ability. And so essentially everyone can learn mediumship. Not everyone has the ability developed sufficiently enough in order to take it to a professional level. So it is truly a calling. So for me, it was an absolute calling. I cannot imagine doing anything else but being a medium and an author. And so I have obviously uh, developed naturally to a point and then I trained and developed myself further. So the people that, are, that do have natural ability, we all do, that want to take it to the next level, yes, it can be taught, but it is a craft that needs to be honed over time, patience, experience, and also good grounded knowledge. Oh, which brings us to our next question. How did you know you were a medium? Yes, so as a child, I used to see spirit uh, objectively. What that means is I saw spirit people walking around in my home. And I'll be honest, as a younger child, it absolutely terrified me because I had no idea who these people were. I also used to hear my name being called and then I'd turn and there would be no one there. And uh, those experiences I shared with my parents at the time who were just basically trying to 
it reassured me that I was safe and everything was fine. And so they would say to me that, you know, you're just imagining these people. And that's a common uh, occurrence. With time, I stopped seeing them objectively and started to see them in my mind's eye, in my third eye, and was always aware and sensitive to spirit energy. But no one actually told me that I was a medium or that uh, they put it into context for me. So I never really knew I was a medium until I was uh, an older uh, adult. I was in my 20s and I had uh, decided to uh, learn some additional personal development courses outside of my corporate career. I was led to a Shiatsu college and in the college itself, there was another medium, a practicing medium and psychic there who beelined it straight to me on day one and pretty much told me that I, you know, that I was a medium and a psychic as well. And at the time, it, it shocked me in one way, but it, it was a relief because then I could understand and place into context all the experiences I had leading up to that point. And then I really didn't look back from there. I was very excited to embrace it, to explore it, to understand it, and to move forward with it. And here I am, you know, some 20, 30 years later, and I'm living and breathing it fully as part of who I am, at the very fabric of my being. So can you tell us a couple of reasons why one might visit a medium? Yes, so usually people will visit a medium because they are looking for some sort of closure or some sort of way to move past their grief. Often they're stuck in grief or they just truly miss terribly their loved ones. And a good professional, well-trained medium needs to establish and confirm that they indeed have the person there through evidence and evidence that is verifiable. So a medium needs to be able to say to the person that they are giving them information that couldn't readily or easily be found, say on a Google search, or is not known. So it can't be vague. It needs to be incredibly specific. And once they've established that evidence there and established the identity of the communicator in the spirit world, then the beautiful healing messages of love come through. And quite often people on the other side also need healing. They need to come in and say sorry. They have regrets or they're there to tell their loved ones that, yes, even though my eyes were closed and I was in a coma, I was aware that you were there holding my hand. I did hear you say your goodbyes. And another beautiful thing that they can verify for us is, is that they are still present in our lives because they are able to bring through information that has happened that is past their time of passing. So quite often someone in the spirit world will come in and say, I now know that you've become a mother and you have two little boys. Um, and that is just a wonderful thing that, um, you know, for someone to be able to say, well, I wish my mum was here to see my child being born and then to have spirit say uh, that you're able to communicate and see that happening. So how would you say, uh, what are different ways that a spirit might communicate with us? So there's various ways that spirit communicates, and usually they are in alignment with what we call the five clairs, which is clairvoyance, so clear seeing, clear audience, clear hearing, clear sentience through feeling, uh, clear cognizance through knowing, so something will just pop in your head, um, or smell and taste, which is clear audience, clear good stuff. So there's signs and symbols that will encompass those five senses or five areas. So a medium... Or, or indeed, someone who's just sensitive to spirit might see a physical sign, such as a feather or a rainbow, when they're just at the time they're thinking of their loved one. It can be a billboard that you notice you may have driven past 20 times, you know, a day and not really notice, and then look up and you're thinking of your loved one and a word will pop out or a, or a short phrase. It can be pictures in your mind, uh, so or songs. You might see, hear songs playing. So the spirit world utilises as many um, areas and and ways of trying to get their message across to you, if you are open and perceptive enough to you know, to understand that they are indeed signs. I often say to clients, you know, if, if mum says, I'm going to come to you as a butterfly, it, it means randomly when you least expect it or when you're thinking of them. It doesn't mean you then go to the butterfly enclosure at your local zoo and say, oh, that's mum, because that's not a sign. <laughs> it's usually, and there's an energy, I'd always smile and have a giggle with that, 
So it's not, you know, we don't make the signs happen. They come to us in the most beautiful, loving way. And usually there's a slight shift in the energy and you feel uh, different. You feel comfortable. You feel secure. You feel warm. You feel the love that comes in because it truly is our love and our thoughts of the spirit people that bring in close to us. So have you ever had a negative experience? Yes, that's a really good question. I personally haven't. I feel all spirit is loving. But like I say to my clients and my students, if we've got old Uncle Arthur, who was the grumpy so-and-so in life, he's not going to miraculously turn into this wonderful, beautiful, loving being on the other side. He's going to be grumpy because that's his personality and the personality stays intact in the spirit world. Where the negativity comes in, it's usually with fear-based thinking. And this is why I talk about, in my book, Mental Mastery. We must have a disciplined mind and a grounded attitude when we're opening up to mediumship. We can't go in with any fear because fear will colour our experiences and completely make it negative. So another example I give is quite often people will say, oh, my God, my house must be haunted because every time I walk past that particular hallway there's a cold feeling right there and the cold feeling there's an actual explanation um the mechanics of it if you will is that spirit will use the most readily available source of energy in order to communicate and typically that is body heat so they will pull some body heat from us in order to utilize that energy as a as a vehicle for communication and so the cold energy is easily explainable when you understand it. But if you don't understand that, you think, gosh, it's cold and therefore it must be evil, it must be, you know, horrible. And it's not. There's a simple explanation for it. So what made you write the book, Giving Spirit a Voice? I am deeply passionate about mentoring and teaching quality mediumship. And I think the only way that that will happen is when there is very good strong uh, information, educational information around. And most of the books on mediumship that I have come across, I'm an avid reader and I love to read all genres, but most of the books I came across typically will talk about the medium's personal journey. And while that's inspiration and it's wonderful, there was not any real practical hands-on manual that talks about the theory of mediumship and then gives you a list of beautiful exercises that you can practice and put into place immediately once you've read the chapter. So I, being a practical person and a doer, I actually decided that that book wasn't there, so I'm going to write it instead. And that's how it came about. I love to write and I love to read, as I said. So this book was what my motivator was about. And it was a book that I could then say to my students, here's a really great practical manual that you can take away and understand. And as a companion pack to the book, I also developed a series of what I call daily practice cards, giving spirit a voice daily practice cards. All those people that want to continue their practice, they're able to pull an exercise out of the pack for the day and work on that, or they're able to get together with two or three other people, family members or other people that are interested in mediumship, and form their own little home circles where they're able to also practice as a group. And so far, um, the book was released very late November, early December of last year, and I've had incredible feedback on, on it, and people have talked about this being a gap in the market, and that's what they've been searching for. So it feels like I did listen to my own spirit, which was giving me this guidance, and now I'm really pleased to see that it's also influencing and helping others with their, giving their spirit a voice. That is so interesting. Well, it looks like we're out of time. Anyone interested in purchasing this book can log into semediapro.com or visit Amazon. It is available in hardcover and paperback. You can also visit ioannaserpanos.com for more information. And that is I-O-A-N-N-A-S-E-R-P-A-N-O-S.com. And you can even sign up to download your free copy of Energy Hygiene for Empaths Guide. And again, we have been speaking with Ioana Serpanos, author of Giving Spirit a Voice, The Mechanics of Mediumship. Thanks again for joining us today, Ioana. Thank you so much. It was my absolute pleasure. Oh, mine as well. And listeners, if you're interested in getting your book published, please visit us at semediapro.com and click on the book publishing link. This is Jody Hawkinson, host of Southeast Media Sunrise, 
Southeast Media Productions. Like us on Facebook at Southeast Media Productions or visit our website at scmediapro.com.